Welcome to First Air Assault Supplemental Training Video, Radio and Communication Standards, which reviews not only how to use Task Force Arrowhead Radio, but also the radio and communication protocol standards set by First Air Assault. Whether a new member watching this video as pre-work for their Fundamental Skills Training Module 1, or a seasoned member wanting to refresh their knowledge, or even a non-member looking for a walkthrough of Task Force Arrowhead Radio, we hope everyone takes something new away from this video. Much of the communication in First Air Assault is conducted using a radio, so it's important everybody knows how to use the radio system itself, as well as understand the etiquettes of military communication. The subject matter will be covered in the following order. How to use the Blue 4 personal and long-range radios in Task Force Arrowhead Radio. Radio Communication Standards and Protocols. Task Force Arrowhead Radio, abbreviated as TFAR and called Task Force Radio during this training video, is a mod that not only allows for realistic signal range and radio usage, but also brings directional chat limited by distance into the game. Task Force Radio offers 3D direct speech when players are not using the radio. To speak in-game, use the same key used for TeamSpeak's push to talk. If your current setting uses TeamSpeak's voice activated option, First Air Assault members will need to change this to the push to talk option. Personnel in First Air Assault use two types of radios, the ANPRC-152 and the RT-1523G for the Blue 4 personal and long-range radios respectively, both of which feature the following. They're considered unique objects within the Arma 3 world. This feature allows one player to program a radio and trade it with another player. Radios can be taken from dead enemy bodies and reveal frequencies. During operations, radios should be stripped from dead bodies before being left behind. First, a look at the personal radio, the ANPRC-152, referred to as the PRC-152 during this video, featuring a frequency range of 30 to 512 megahertz and enjoying a broadcast range of 5 kilometers, the PRC-152 is in every member's default loadout. Once a member joins the server, each task force radio is registered as a unique item and it's ready to use. Here are the keys we're going to be using during the tutorial, which can be accessed through the keyboard and by interacting with the on-screen radio. These are going to be discussed as they're used during the tutorial, and members may want to consider locating the quick reference guides for each radio in the Members Only section of the First Air Assault website. The QRGs are useful reference tools not only for this training video, but to have at hand while in mission and in game. Although nothing to do with the radios themselves, Task Force Radio allows users to change the volume of their voice by scrolling through the three options of whispering, normal, or yelling using the control tab buttons. Players should note this does not affect the signal volume of the actual radio transmission. The first radio in this tutorial is the PRC-152, and the first step to using the PRC-152 is to program the frequencies that will be used. To do this, press Control p to open the personal radio interface. Now if you're ever unsure of what each key does, simply hold the cursor over a key and the hint box will appear reminding you of its function. As changes are made to the radio, an information box appears on the bottom right hand side of the screen, noting the changes. This information box also appears when speaking on the radio, detailing which radio, channel, and frequency is being used. This box will be on the screen for the length of time the talk button is pressed. By default, when the interface is open, channel 1 will be on the radio. To enter the frequency, highlight the existing frequency, type in the desired frequency using the numbers found on your keyboard. When the correct frequency is entered, press the ENT button on the radio and save it. Before programming the next frequency, let's consider routing channels 1 signal or frequency to a particular ear. This makes it easier to distinguish which channel is being heard. To do this, cycle through the following options by clicking on 0, bottom on the bottom left. The choices are left ear, right ear, or both ears. In this example, we're going to be sending the radio traffic from channel 1 to our left ear. To set the next frequency, choose channel 2, 
Radio channels are switched by pressing the plus and minus keys on the preset key or by using the keys on the radio's keypad. We set the frequency as detailed earlier. Now let's route channel 2 to our right ear. Press 0 and select the right ear. Before switching back to channel 1, channel 2 can be used as an alternative channel which allows for the ability to speak on either pre-programmed channel without opening the radio and manually changing the channel. To do this, stay on channel 2. Click the left arrow button, bottom row, second from the left button. This should change the channel prefix from C to A. Very important, you need to return the radio to channel 1 for this to work correctly. Now press escape to close the PRC-152 interface and now we're ready to talk on the radio. To do this, press caps lock to speak on the primary channel and press T to speak on the secondary channel. Now there are additional keys that players need to know. Control up, left and right arrow allows for the rapid switching of the personal radio stereo modes. Number keys of 1 to 8 allow for the rapid switching of personal radio channels. When the radio interface is open, decrease and increase the radio's volume using the volume knob at the top of the radio. With the cursor over the volume knob, just click the left mouse button to reduce the volume. The right mouse button increases the volume. It should be noted this is a circular knob. Continuously clicking the right changes the volume to say 80 to 90 to 100 and then 10 and so on. This happens the same when you're clicking left, only it goes down. Clicking the right arrow button on the radio scrolls through two options, speaker or headphones, playing the radio in-game through a speaker or the player's headphones. Unless specifically asked to do so, First Air Assault members should never have the radio on speaker. Aside from broadcasting the radio traffic to anyone within earshot, enemy included, it's very annoying to other players. Moving on to the RT-1523G, referred to as the 1523 in this training video, it features a frequency range of 30 to 87 megahertz and enjoys a broadcast range of a massive 20 kilometers. The 1523 is stored in certain backpacks and assigned to specialty roles or leadership positions in first air assault. As with the PRC-152, every 1523 is registered as a unique item in-game. Here are the keys we're going to be using during the tutorial, which can be accessed through the keyboard and by interacting with the on-screen radio. The first step to using the 1523 is to program the frequencies that will be used. To do this, press Alt-P to open the long-range radio interface. As with the PRC-152, now if you're ever unsure what each key does, simply hold the cursor over a key and a hint box will appear, reminding you of its function. By default, when the interface is open, channel 1 will be on the radio. To enter the frequency, highlight the existing frequency. Now you're going to type in the desired frequency using the numbers found on your keyboard. When the correct frequency is entered, press the FREQ button on the radio and save it. Before programming the next frequency, let's consider routing the signal to a particular ear. As mentioned earlier, this helps you distinguish which frequency or channel is being heard. To do this, cycle through the following options by clicking on the STO button found on the bottom row, second from the right. The choices are left ear, right ear, and both ears. In this example, we're going to be sending the radio traffic from channel 1 to our left ear. To set up the next frequency, choose channel 2. Radio channels are switched by pressing number keypads on the radio. We set the frequency as detailed earlier. Now let's route channel 2 to our right ear. Press STO and select right ear. Before switching back to channel 1, we'll make channel 2 an alternative channel like we did with the PRC-152. To do this, stay on channel 2, click on the ERFOFST button, second row, second from the top. This should change the channel prefix from CH to CA. Now it's very important, as before, you want to return the radio to channel 1. Press escape to close the 1523 interface and now we're ready to talk on the radio. To do this, press control and caps to speak on the primary channel 
and press Ctrl T to speak on the secondary channel. The additional keys players need to know for the 1523 are Alt, Up, Left, Right Arrow, which allows for the rapid switching of the long range stereo modes. Control and number keys of 1 to 8 allow for the rapid switching of long range channels. When the radio interface is open, you can increase the radio's volume using the time button and decrease the radio's volume by pressing the bat call button. Clicking the load button on the radio scrolls through the two options, speakers or headphones. The next section of this training video, Radio Communication Standards and Protocols, reviews how radio traffic is managed and the communication is structured to make first air assault an effective force in ARMA 3. Starting with the basics, there are three defined channels during first air assault operations. The command frequency used by Zero Alpha and squad leaders. Squad frequency, each squad is assigned its own frequency. And team frequency, individual fire teams are assigned individual frequencies. Here's an example of how different roles within the group would manage their channels. Like many modern militaries, First Air Assault uses call signs for radio communications. Call signs allow for immediate identification of not only who's speaking, but their role in the battlefield. Using call signs for team level communications may not necessarily be mandated. Call signs for squad positions, well, these were reviewed in Fundamental Skills Training Module 1. Individual call signs within a squad allows for immediate identification of who's speaking right down to their role within the squad. The squad indicator is included in the call sign. An example would be Bravo 1-1 or Bravo 1's team lead. Here are the call signs. As mentioned, call signs even indicate the combat role of the member speaking. This can be best seen with Alpha Squad, the six-person squad charged with escorting Zero Alpha, or Mission Command. In this case, the team leader would be Alpha 1-1, and the auto rifleman, although number two person in the squad, is Alpha 1-4. This is because the number four identifies the AR position being the same in all the squads. Aircraft enjoy their own call signs, allowing for quick type identification. Call sign actual and call sign are used to differentiate between pilot and co-pilot. An example of this would be Eagle 1 actual would be used by the pilot of a Blackfish, while Eagle 1 would be used by the co-pilot. When there are multiple type of an aircraft in the air, the call sign is adjusted, so you'd have Eagle 1, Eagle 2, and so on. Effective radio communications includes knowing who is sending a message, which members it's intended for, and a quick and clear delivery. Having it consistently completed in a uniform manner is even more important. Every member, regardless of where they are in the chain of command, are expected to meet the first air assault's minimum radio communication standards. These include universally accepted voice procedures which can be divided into three crucial categories. Sender identification and intended message recipient. Using a universal language. And finally, delivering a clear and quick message. With the current radio system, only one person can speak at a time on any given channel, making airtime on any given channel very valuable. This limitation also mandates all transmissions be concise and clear, best achieved using the ABCs of radio communication. These are A stands for accuracy, understand what would be said before speaking. Verify the information about to be presented, this would include grid coordinates and any other details. Ensure the correct channel and volume settings are being used. B is for brevity. To limit the amount of radio traffic, users should avoid long-winded requests or lengthy answers. Aside from completing a broadcast quickly and clearly, there are other reasons for brevity. The receiving user may have a situation that limits their attention, and others may be waiting to use the frequency. And C is for clarity. Clarity can be achieved by the following mnemonic, RSVP. R stands for rhythm, speech should be steady. S stands for speed, slightly slower than normal speech. V stands for volume, ensure the microphone can clearly pick up your voice. And P stands for press, make sure that everything that's said is heard by pressing the send button slightly before speaking and keeping it pressed until after you're finished. 
Voice procedures include various techniques used to clarify, simplify, and standardize spoken communications over military radios. One such technique is the use of procedure words, or pro words. They're a type of verbal shorthand. The universal use of a widely used standardized military vocabulary prevents confusion and promotes quick and clear communication. All members of First Air Assault should use the same standardized military vocabulary. To help with this, the group has compiled a list of pro words in the Fundamental Skills Training Manual. When clarifying letters, the NATO phonetic alphabet should be used. It's included in the reference section of the Fundamental Skills Training Manual. Stating numbers. In the world of radio communications, it's common practice to state numbers with each digit separately. Instead of saying 35 when giving the frequency, it should be said as 35 for clarity. Another example, instead of reporting there are 30 enemy soldiers, personnel should say enemy infantry number 30. Now let's look at some common radio mistakes. Over and out. Over states a member is waiting for a reply, yet out states they've ended the conversation. It's a little confusing. Repeat last. Well, say again is really used when asking a person to repeat their last statement. Repeat last is a command used for artillery and close support requests. Using this incorrectly could lead to a nasty accident. Let's bring it all together. All the techniques, call signs, ABCs, pro words, we're going to bring them all together to create clear, concise radio communications. Let's look at a typical radio conversation. We can outline and review the format and etiquette of a radio conversation of first air assault, which uses generally accepted military standards for radio communications. So we're going to be looking at the originator, the member who is starting the conversation, and the receiver who the originator is speaking to or would like to speak to. In this scenario, Bravo 10, the squad leader, wants to speak with Mission Lead, or Zero Alpha. The first step is to initiate contact. It's also known as the handshake. To do this, they're going to say the receiver's call sign, this is, and then the originator's call sign. What this sounds like is Zero Alpha, this is Bravo 10. When the receiver is ready or able to speak, they'll reply with this structure. Receiver's call sign, originator's call sign, and send. What this sounds like is zero alpha, bravo one zero, send. The format for the remaining conversation will be the call sign speaking, identifies themselves first. The reason we do this is if anyone is listening or joins the conversation midstream, they know who is speaking. The message is given, and when finished, using the term over is used. So the structure would be originator's call sign, message, and over. Bravo 10, be advised, Bravo Squad is secure checkpoint chicken. Over. The receiver replies, following the format we just discussed. Zero Alpha, I need Bravo 10 to hold checkpoint until notified otherwise. Over. The steps will be repeated until the conversation is done. When ending the conversation, it's usual radio etiquette that the person who originated the conversation gets to finish it. However, as with all operational matters, chain of command takes precedence. But in this case, we're going to let the originator finished the conversation and that will sound like this originators call sign message out or bravo one zero we will hold checkpoint until notified otherwise out let's hear what that sounds like without all the explanations zero alpha this is bravo one zero zero alpha bravo one zero sent bravo one zero be advised bravo squad is secured checkpoint chicken over Zero Alpha, I need Bravo One Zero to hold checkpoint until notified otherwise. Over. Bravo One Zero will hold checkpoint until notified otherwise. Out. So, some important notes about that conversation. Bravo One Zero repeated his order. This is called a readback, and it's a good radio habit as it ensures any directions or orders were heard correctly. It gives the opportunity for any corrections if the orders were misspoken or misheard. And as you'll note, the conversation was ended with out. Not over and out, simply out. Looking at the radio check, 
This process is used to confirm the correct frequencies have been programmed and radios are working. A member of chain of command requests a radio check for those on their immediate frequency. Using the call sign order, personnel confirm radio settings by using the following phrase, call sign, OK out. If a call sign doesn't respond within three seconds, the next call sign gives their radio check. Any call sign that misses their opportunity should wait until the radio check is completed. Initiator of the radio check will inquire about the missing personnel afterwards. The chain of command who initiated the radio check concludes the radio check with call sign, all OK out. Concerns or equipment failures are managed when the group radio check is completed. The process should be completed in a quick, effective manner. Let's hear an example of a radio check. Bravo squad, radio check. Bravo 1-1, one, one, OK out. Bravo 1-2, OK out. Bravo 1-0, all OK, out. A few quick notes about the radio check. If completed at the fire team level, the team leader would begin and end the radio check. Command element radio checks are completed in alphabetical order with the squads currently operational or in-game. When joining a frequency, if a member moves frequencies to communicate with another team, they're required to transmit an introductory message on the new frequency. The member would complete a handshake, then state, call sign is now on frequency, frequency number. Let's listen to an example of Charlie 1-1, one, Charlie 1's team lead, joining Bravo Squad Frequency. Bravo 1-0, this is Charlie 1-1. One, one. Bravo 1-0, send Charlie 1-1. One, one. Charlie 1-1, one, one, let's join frequency 3-5-0. Bravo 1-0 copies. Charlie 1-1 one, one has joined 3-5, 5 by 5 out. 5x5, five five, a popular phrase when using radio communications. In the real world, it describes the quality of communications, specifically to the signal-to-noise ratio. 5x5 five five is the best of 25 possible subjective responses. As signal strength is engaged in ARMA, the variable that can be reported is readability, with the recipient of the message gauging it from 1 to 5, can't be heard, to 5x5, five five, perfectly heard. Transferring command. When a member in the chain of command becomes incapacitated, the role needs to be filled temporarily. The following procedure allows for the unit to remain informed of all the active leadership. The first step is to contain the situation that created the need and change of leadership. The new leader needs to ensure one of the two channels heard at all times is indeed the command frequency. During the next available pause in radio traffic, the following message is sent. Command net, this is call sign. Be advised, fallen leader is down. I say again, fallen leader is down. I am the new squad or team actual. An example would be if Bravo 1 1 assumes the leadership role of Bravo squad lead, the message would be as follows Command net, this is Bravo 1 1. Be advised, Bravo 1 0 is down. I say again, Bravo 1 0 is down. I'm the new Bravo actual. Out. If required, arrangements should be made for the fallen and now respawn member to be reinserted to resume command. Assumed leadership is maintained until relieved using the call sign of the squad or team actual. When the respawn leader is able to effectively take command of their element, the entire unit is informed of the command transfer. Continuing with the same example, that would sound like command net, this is Bravo 1-0. Be advised, I am Bravo actual, out. Quick personnel checks. The status of personnel and their equipment is important to the unit's capabilities and possible mission success. It's also a crucial part of situation reports or sit reps, which is going to be detailed in the next topic. This information is completed in a quick and effective manner. The quick personnel check or QPC is completed before or after enemy contact, a movement or maneuver. This may also occur when chain of command are reconciling the available equipment or the status of the squads. Whether directed by a squad leader or at their own discretion, team leaders will initiate a quick personnel check in the following manner. Team leader states on the radio, quick personnel check or QPC, and team or squad frequency. Response is given on the radio, the team frequency and HUD order. The member appearing after the team leader responds first. Members shouldn't wait for the team leader to start the process with their answer. The team leader's response is going to be given at the end of the quick personnel check. 
One of the four choices can be given in the member's response. Green for both ammo and health, which are good. Yellow, either running low on ammo or a member has sustained an injury, but it's not impeding them from moving. Red, low ammo or injury impedes further movement until treated. And black, no ammo. However, if they're mortally wounded, they won't be able to respond. Step number four, response is given in the following format. Call sign, color, ammo, color, health. An example would be 1-1, one, one, yellow ammo, green health. If both options are the same color, the answer can be given as either 1-1 one, one, green green or 1-1 one, one, green. The next member appearing on the HUD responds in the same manner. If there's no response given within three seconds, the next member on the HUD responds. Quick personnel check is meant to be a quick assessment of personnel status. If a member isn't responding, the team leader will look into the reasons after the able-bodied members have responded. The list of team members responds in HUD order as detailed above. The team leader completes the quick personnel check with call sign color, ammo, color, health, followed by questions related to any information given or members who didn't complete the QPC. An example would be 1-1 one, one, green green, does anyone have eyes on 1-3? Bravo 1-1, one, one, QPC 5-5. Five, five. One, 1-2 green. 1-3 one, yellow on ammo, green health. Bravo 1-1. One, one. Green. Does anyone have eyes on 1-4? Some notes on the quick personnel check. Speed is key in a QPC. If a member doesn't offer a timely response, the next member should continue the process. The sooner the quick personnel check is completed, the quicker the number of missing or wounded personnel can be established. If shortages of ammo or ordnance are reported, members should remain at their post until addressed or approached. Team or squad leaders will find solutions and approach members as needed. Situation reports are a short overview of the current status of a battle group. This can be sent from a group as small as a scouting party or as large as a 13-member squad. Situation reports can be pre-scheduled by operational orders or op awards or requested by chain of command during an operation. Designed to be clear, concise, and deliver an abundance of information, a situation report uses a predetermined format. Adhering to all the radio disciplines covered in this section so far, a SIT rep is given in the following manner. Paragraph A, or the first line, initiates traffic with the receiving call sign, sending call sign, and introduction. Even if it's being requested, the first line of a SIT rep is always given, allowing anyone who just joined the channel to understand what information is being given. Paragraph B, or the second line, sends grid coordinates and displacement. Some examples of displacements are spread out 50 meters east to west, 360 perimeter with a 50 meter spread. Paragraph C, or the third line, is the current situation at the grid. This could include moving through, holding here, defending this position, or staging for an attack. Paragraph D, which is the fourth line, are the own actions or the next steps. Continuing overwatch as ordered. Awaiting next order. Will conduct security sweep on immediate area. And paragraph E, the final and fifth line, are the administrative points. Is anything needed? Ammo, medical, supplies, reinforcements? So let's put all this together. Uh, assume that the sit rep has been requested from squad leader Bravo 10. It'll sound like this. Paragraph A, or the first line, will be 0 Alpha. This is Bravo 10 with sit rep. Paragraph B, or the second line, grid 0791, break 9873. Centered on grid and spread northwest to southeast 40 meters, break. Paragraph C, or the third line, observing possible weapons cache and infantry in area of grid coordinate 0795, break, 9791, break. Paragraph D, or the fourth line, will advise if received contact, but intent is to hold firm, break. And the final paragraph, E, or the fifth line, request helicopter recon of possible enemy cache on aforementioned grid. How copy? Let's hear what that sounds like without all the labeling of the lines. Zero Alpha, this is Bravo 10 with sit rep. Break. Grid 0791, break 9873. Centered on grid and spread northwest to southeast 40 meters, break. Observing possible weapons cache and infantry in area of grid coordinate 0795, break 9791, 
break. Will advise if received contact, but intent is to hold firm, break. Request helicopter recon of possible enemy cache on aforementioned grid. How copy? Zero Alpha could reply. Zero Alpha, solid copy on all. Reference request, wait out. Note the term break is used at the end of each paragraph and line. And that concludes First Air Assault Supplemental Training Video, Radio Communications and Standards. Members should understand there is a steep learning curve with radio communications and no one expects perfection. As with most things in First Air Assault, it's all about effort. Remember, the harder you try to get it right, the better you'll become. And regardless of whether you're a member or not, we hope everyone watching has learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about First Air Assault, stop by our website and introduce yourself. We look forward to meeting you.